Hi, hi, happy Thursday. Welcome, I am Meredith. I am here with our message for the 7th of December, 2023. We're using the Mermaid Tarot for our message today. We've got Neptune direct in Pisces, so felt like a good day to use a watery deck. <laughs> All right, we've got the sun in Sagittarius, the moon is in Libra, Venus is in Scorpio, and our remaining retrogrades going on over here. Tuning into the energy atmosphere, what's on offer to us today? How might we navigate it? First card, Three of Wands, excellent card to see. You know, we've been speaking this week about uh, the Nine of Cups and fulfillment, the magician, and keeping our heart space focus on the big picture, the greater vision that we have for ourselves. And the Three of Wands feels like a card for us to go deeper into what we're giving all of our attention to at this time. So what are you bringing to life on your foundation, in your heart space, and what actions are you taking? We've spoken a lot about that. Lots of encouragement coming to us from the cards to do something, anything. Take one step in the direction of your dreams, your goals, your magic, your fulfillments. And here's the Three of Wands to give a little bit more of that same encouragement. And then our next card is the Nine of Pentacles. Great card. This is all about our self-relationship. I know when we turn over the Nine of Pentacles, most people are concerned when they see it in the way that they are concerned when they see the Hermit because it indicates uh, a solitary energy, an individualized energy. And most people speak of this card in connection to relationships, meaning they're going to be single, solitary, and alone. <laughs> while this card indicates your self relationship the relationship you have to you it indicates and encourages us to go deeper into our self relationship the inner harmony of our divine masculine divine feminine in connection combination with our super consciousness which is all of our intuitive gifts and we have many of them so I feel that the Three of Wands is encouraging us deeper into self-relationship and deeper into the connection, the waking conscious connection that we have to our super conscious intuitive blessings and bringing them into the now and using them for our highest and greatest good. You know, the Three of Wands is no slouch of a card. It's in the suit of wands, you've got fire and enthusiasm and passion and motivation. And then we have nine of pentacles. What are you doing with it personally? What are you doing with all of that energy? And if you're not doing anything with it, now is the moment to reconsider how you want to invest. So the cards have been pushing us in this direction for months, really. And certainly the messages have amped up over the past several weeks. And as I've mentioned so frequently in recent readings, we saw a lot of the Three of Swords and we're using that in a way, in the silver, silver linings way, uh, what was the greatest outcome to some of the greatest challenge that you have faced and grown through, healed with, and how have you channeled that into your now? So the Three of Wands and the Nine of Pentacles are having us do just that. Also, I feel that together they're beckoning us deeper into what we're nurturing in heart space. Let's see what's next. <laughs> and there's the high priestess. She has not wandered too far from us. No matter what deck I use, she's nearby in the reading. Either she's coming off the underside of the deck or in this case, she's right smack in the middle of the reading. If you ever need encouragement to pay attention to your intuitive blessings, this card is it. So as you know, the high priestess doesn't necessarily give you the answer. She's more like a guiding light. What do you make of all the signs and symbols that are showing up in your world? And how are you channeling that energy into what you are in co-creative process with 
within your connection to the universal all? Ooh, right? Great question. Next set, two cards. Here's the Six of Swords showing up again. I think this has been with us in every, every reading this week. So we're moving into calmer waters. We're leaving something behind on the Six of Swords. I like that this card has been so repetitive because we tend to make stories out of the past and live through those stories in the now. Therefore, we end up creating the same story in the oncoming. So we've been challenged over and over and over again and challenged in a good way. I mean, in an encouraging way to take a look at our stories, take the very best of them. Again, silver lining, attitude, appreciation, gratitude for everything that we perceive to be a hardship and make something great out of it. So listen to the inner voice and take a step, take an action, even if it's the tiniest one ever. So our Six of Swords is paired with, look at that, the Seven of Wands. So taking taking a bigger step, going deeper in. This is what the Three of Wands is beckoning for over here with the Nine of Pentacles. And we may feel like we don't belong in this new world vision that we have for ourselves. Look, this dude's all geared up in his scuba stuff, scuba stuff and has gone into a whole other world. And in this whole other world, per the Six of Swords, there is something better awaiting us. And I feel like these two cards together are engaging our curiosity. Be curious enough to consider all of the different ways that you can bring your dream and your vision to life. Because the seven of wands, first as a seven, it's all about bringing heaven to earth within our own heart space, right? We're in development for this. We're getting a, a fresh look at a new horizon for ourselves. And we're pulling elements from the, the new horizon that we're gazing at into the now so that we can create a foundation for our version of heaven and earth to stand upon. Next we have, <laughs> see, there's confirmation. There's the four of wands, another card we've seen more than once this week. It is the happiest card in the minor arcana. It's a super stable foundation. And it's all about building the dream. We've got to step through some portals. We've got to cross new thresholds within our own comfort zone to get there, to make that happen. And the three of wands shows the progress of us wading deeper in and using our intuitive senses, our super consciousness uh, to our highest and greatest benefit. Excellent. So keep doing that. Surprise yourself. Uh, from the bottom of the deck, what's not so obvious for us? How is the universe supporting us? Our first card is Queen of Pentacles. We've seen the Queen of Pentacles, I think, this week. I know we've seen the King for sure. She is the divine feminine symbolism of receiving all that we're investing in. The King and the Queen of Pentacles are master manifestors when it comes to tarot and the message that they bring. They invest and they invest well in themselves, knowing that everything they desire to see, interact with, and create in their realm is completely up to them. And it's effortless for them. So I like that she shows up here in the reading, shows that we're receptive, that we're open to receiving from everything, our intuitive visions and uh, super conscious awareness are beginning to reveal to us. Next we have the Emperor back again in the reading. What a great card to have because, you know, there's Aries fire. There's no uh, confusion when you see this card. It's divine masculine energy. So tune into your divine masculine energy. How can you take that Aries fire and go deeper into your vision and make more of it. The emperor is here to help lead the way. Next we have, yeah, look at this, the wheel of fortune. Oh my God, you just told me to stop there. So I will. This is the divine delivery system. It's turning in our favor. It's 
moving to our highest and greatest good. And this is us in alignment with our destiny. And when this card shows up, it really is the reminder that nothing can get by us. Everything that's meant for us will come to us. These cards are asking us, what is your participation level right now? And how important is your four of wands happiness, right? It probably means everything to you. So the cards are encouraging you to take a step, take an action to wade deeper into your own journey. Let's tune in now to Angel Answers. If you have a question, put it to this deck. If you're looking for a sign or a symbol, please allow the cards to bring it to you. Or let them confirm something unique and personal to you. First card flipping over in the shuffle is peaceful resolution. Trust that. Trust that you are creating a peaceful resolution to any challenge you're facing in the moment. <laughs> Sometimes our greatest challenge is our Nine of Pentacles. It's in our self-relationship. In the old stories we tell ourselves. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, this is unique for us. Now, here's the emphatic no. We got the quiet no the other day. Here's the emphatic no. Where do you need to say no? Have you overscheduled yourself? Have you been saying yes to too many activities or have you been squeezing things into your schedule which doesn't leave adequate time for you to do the kind of self-care that you uh, really require right now? And is that something that's preventing you from taking a look at your seven of wands, four of wands horizon, right? So maybe you need to put an emphatic no in place within self-relationship and stop saying yes to too many things, leaving yourself last on the list. You deserve to be at the top of your list. Ace of Cups, everything from the overflow, right? <laughs> Some of you may have asked a yes, no. Next. I like that. Let go. I feel like that's a confirmation to our beautiful uh, Wheel of Fortune. Let go, let the wheel turn in your favor. Allow the, the universe, the multiverse to do some of the heavy lifting when it comes to uh, the development and the expansion of your dream. How is not your job? What is your job? <laughs> One more. Excellent. Emphatic success. Yeah, let go. Let yourself be blessed by your own success. Fantastic. Final word on the reading from Shaman's Dream Oracle. How is our soulful presence informing our waking consciousness? All right. We have... Garden of Venus, <laughs> oh, rest and renewal. We've got Venus in Scorpio right now. So we've had an intense Scorpio season. I have felt the overflow of that energy into Sagittarius season. And I feel that the energy of Sagittarius, the sun in Sagittarius is giving more life, more strength, more stability, four of wands to everything that has risen from the depths of our self relationship in Scorpio season through the eclipses and so on. And we're now reaping the rewards. So this is a rest and renewal card. So take a load off, put your feet up, do some self care, say no to your phone for a little while, get off the phone, get off the device, be with yourself, be in nature, connect and commune with the all that is and do some uh, great investment in your vision. Bring what's on your horizon into the now onto your four of wands foundation. Have a fabulous Thursday, everybody. Peace, love, happiness, laughter, fun. <laughs> Namaste.